So, we finally made it back here. <laughs> that was a bit of fun. So we're going to put it around the back of the house. So that way I can work on it over the winter. Need some work, that's for sure. So there you go, this is the first new pot for the pots next for next year. I say new, these pipes here, this is this has come off of old pots that I've already made years ago and I've um, I basically recycled the plastic from the old pots so it doesn't go to waste. I can like I say dismantle old pots, reuse the plastic. And this larger one here is a slightly larger on the end here. I used that because I've got uh, I've got a roll of it which was given to me by somebody. It's, again, it was being dumped, so I've taken it and we'll recycle it. But um, you can see that um, there's a trap in this one already in there, a parlor trap. Now, if you're ever going to put those in, always put them in before you net. You can burn them after if you want, but it's a lot harder. It's much easier to get a nice shape to it and perfect sort of trap that you want in there. And if you want to see any of this, I'll leave, um, well, I'll shove some links on the end of this video, either in the way of a uh, video or links in description. And you can see how to build them yourself if you want to build these sort of pots. It just keeps the cost down. Um, these cost about probably a third of the price to make than to buy one. Saying that, it all depends on, obviously, where you get your equipment from, what you're using. I mean, if you get, you know, if you can get your hands on the pipe from a recycle, place even if you can get old recyclable net I mean you can get old you can go down the local fish key there might be some old trawlers that somebody's dumping or wants to get rid of you know they dump stuff in these containers and that will chuck out you might better get your hands on some net and uh, well the wood you can either buy the wood or you can strip down some old wood that you've got if you've got any old wood kicking around and it's just a case of getting yourself a box of screws Get yourself a flower pot neck, or you can buy a neck, like a crab pot neck. You're pretty much good to go. So this box arrived. What's in this box? It's the new marker boys for the crab pots. And I went and bought a whole bunch because it's cheaper for me to do that, to get them sent over. Um, these are actually, these are made by a place called Oh Boy, or oh, a guy does them. There, you see there, he's got... Oh boy, on the top of the bob. So it's www.oboy.co.uk. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description as well to his site. He actually makes these. These are actually sort of made on site, I believe. And um, they do all the other ones. They do fenders and they do um, the A1 size, sort of A2, those sort of things. But these ones are ideal for the crab pot. Now, I have actually used these in the past and they, they last a, a quite a long time. The one thing I do like about them is they've actually got a little ferrule in there. And some bobbers you don't get that ferrule. Well, the rope is quite coarse, and the, and the rope will actually wear on it. But these ferrules, they'll last three or four, five years in these bobbers. So, in fact, I can show you one which I've been using for the last probably four or five years now. And it's in there, you see. You can see it's uh, faded quite a lot. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can see this one is finally wearing out. But that's like I say, after four or five years. So, you can't say fairer than that. But they do last, that's for sure. And like I said, I've gone with the orange and I've gone with the red because I can see those at a distance, whereas the, the yellow ones sometimes they can be hard to spot. But yeah, I bought plenty. So we've got plenty for the future, just in case we lose any more. But now they always come in useful, you know, just for marking other things. I mean, when we do these basket pots and that, we're gonna need, gonna need all these, uh, those doing as well. And one of these will probably do the trick in the bay for that because that'll stay up especially with an 8mm rope right so I thought I'd film this it's kind of like my thought process that goes into building these pots I mean you see me um, build things like this crab pots and fishing ideas and I thought we'd just go through the thought process behind it so we're going to be building these for this year which is the basket pots. What I'll do is I'll tip this down, it'll cut me off, but 
give you a better view of what you're kind of seeing here. So this is the uh, wash baskets we bought. Now, what I'm sort of thinking of is um, how we're going to do the bases on these. Now, on the older basket pot, we used an old towel rail, which is basically, for those who didn't see it, is a steel, just steel bars, like so, which can be cut off an old the old towel rail, stuck on and um, strung on, which is probably what I'm going to use for at least two of them, maybe four, probably four of them. It's not very, it's kind of very rough looking when you do it, but the reason behind it is that with the towel rail it's hollow, but when it's steel it's hollow, so it'll add the weight in the base. You can put concrete in some of those pipes if you want to make it heavier, which is probably what I want to do. And it doesn't take any space up in the pot. You see, I was thinking of things like, on some of these pots, depending on where you live and, I mean, um, where you'd use a crab pot, Obviously, where I live, we've got really big tides, very strong waters, and horrendous storms quite often. So, I've got to build these things to, like, you know, not budge at all. Still be able to lift them, but at the same time, they mustn't be able to budge. The trouble is, if you add all that weight in, it takes up room. Because what I'd normally do would be something like, you could do like this. You could put a, make a wooden sort of frame like that put a couple of cross pieces in to strengthen it and then just basically screw it on which isn't the greatest idea and then once you've screwed it you can just whip it on with a bit of rope around the edge as well just to protect it a bit and then you've got your base now inside normally you'd use um, something like a sash weight I don't think I've got any in here to show the trouble with sash weights is they come from sash windows now the old wooden sash windows used to have wet weights either side when you open it it just makes your life opening the window a lot easier um, thing is that was a Victorian thing and most of the sash weights these days have gone or been taken to the recycle and recycled back into whatever which is very stressful when you're a fisherman because sash weights were fantastic because they were literally I'll show you a pipe you'd literally get a pipe a bit bit wider than that say this is steel made of cast iron about so big and you had like a six pound sash weight or an eight pound sash weight and you could literally just screw them into your pot or rope them into your pots and there you have it you've got your weights but unfortunately they are becoming very hard to get hold of and my sash weight supply is now depleted after those lost pots this year I kind of lost a lot of weights so anyway that, that's the one way of doing it another way would be to I mean you could to add your weight into the base you could this is steel hollow steel you could almost use a couple of these either side. I mean look, these pots are going to be small so you don't need excessive amounts of weight but you need enough weight that your bobbers don't pull them away or they don't get moved in storms. How you'd attach these is the next issue. I mean you could almost weld up a frame but that's taking things to the extreme especially in the fact that I don't have a welder at the moment. Um, I need to go and buy one. That's what I need to do. Then I can weld up. But again getting hold of the steel as well, I mean over here, last time I bought a bit of steel for the trailer, it cost me 50 quid for a bit of steel, and I'm not going to spend 50 quid on a crab pot, so you could um, almost put that in like that, and like cover one of the bars, but again you're dealing with wood, and wood is buoyant, and um, yeah, screwing it down, it's all a bit rough, your other option I suppose, other option would be to basically just put net along the bottom. You could almost just have net on the bottom. Um, you might probably be better to do, say, net with a couple of, say, a strengthener there and one either end, because you're going to need something to take the, the, the wear on the bottom, so these would do it. You could kind of do like that almost, and then each end and just rope them again. Again, you're stuck with having to put weights in the pot now. These things sometimes I use, and they're not as good as sashes, but I get steel pipe and you can fill it with concrete. But again, concrete's not the greatest thing because concrete's full of air, like tiny air bubbles and things like that. And it, it, once it goes in water, it's a lot lighter than it is the weight you feel of it or you feel on the land. So concrete isn't necessarily the best thing either. So yeah, that's the trouble when you're trying to build small pots. And then of course, once we've got a base, which like I say, we'll probably use wood, we'll have a look at this one here. This is a, see this one here, this one's, this one you could get weights anymore because it's got a wider area. 
so it doesn't use up so much space in the pot. Um, but again, this one could actually work with net. Let me just see. What's that bit of net we got here? There we go. Yeah, this one. This one. That one could work with net. So anyway, that's something to figure out. The next thing is trying to come up with a neck. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use this because this will just fall to bits once the sun gets at it. But it's just the size. I'm thinking of a, if I can get a crab pot neck this big. Now, I did ask at the tackle shop or the fish sh fishing supplies place. Uh, they didn't have any necks at the time. didn't have any. Um, but they do do three different sizes. And one of them is six inch, which is what I'm thinking. A six inch neck, because this is primarily for... Um, for lobster, that is a six inch, it's slightly over six inch, but that's six inch, you see. And even a decent crab could get in there. Yeah, I mean, you'd still get a decent sized brown crab in there. But we're not going to see many brown crabs because these pots are going to be close in. So there's that. You will get, still get the size ones you'd get in the bay anyway. Spider crabs, well, you're not going to get spider crabs. You will get them going in there, some small ones, but we don't really want spider crabs in these pots though, because I mean, once you've had two large spiders in there, the pot's full. So like I say, it's, so I'm thinking that sort of size, I've just got to get hold of those necks or something I can use, some drain pipe, six inch drain pipe, does that exist? I know there's four inch, yeah there's got to be six inch. As you can see, this is a normal size of a neck, it's not going to work is it? <laughs> not with that, on top of that, it's, it's, as, it's as deep as the pot, so the, <laughs> it wouldn't better get in anyway. So yeah. Oh, these, this is a thought process, like I say, that goes into these sort of things. I mean, this is going to be too big. I think the next, the bought next, will be too big. I'm going to have to make a custom one for this. This one might work with a bought neck. Hold on. Yeah, that one would probably work with a. Yeah, that one would work with a bought neck. Yeah. Yeah, so like I say, these are all things you think of when you're making these pots, or the way I think of it. I mean, some people just think, oh yeah, we'll stick it together and we'll make a pot. But I always try and think, you know, how are things going to work with this? Like with this, the smallest things, like this is a shiny plastic. Now, if something's trying to crawl up it, I know it loves to swim to an extent. But is this going to sort of prevent them from, you know, wanting to climb on the pot? Is the collar going to be offensive in any way? Are they going to look at it and go, yeesh, why do I want to climb on that? You know, silly little things, but sometimes those little things can make all the difference. I had a crab pot years ago. Here's an interesting story. I had a crab pot years ago, and on the neck, on the neck, which would be one of these, it all the way around, it had holes with orange string. All the way around. And for whatever reason, that pot would not catch. Now, it probably had nothing to do with the string, but I had several pots, and it was only the one with the orange string around the neck that wouldn't catch. And I still don't know why to this day. I took the orange, I assumed it was something to do with the orange string. I took the orange string off, then it was fine. So, yeah, strange little things like that. But anyway, I don't, I don't see a problem, like I say, with this, with this pot, because that will kind of blend in with your environment, I would have thought. But then again, I don't know if it does or doesn't, including this one, because I'm not a lobster. And I don't know what a lobster sees. You know, like I've said before, fish see colour in a totally different way to what we see it. And they've got something like 18 cones in their eyes. I don't know how many we got. It's like three or five or something. It's not many. But a lobster is something like 18. And they'll see colours we can't even un understand. I mean, this, this turquoise to you is turquoise. To a fish, it could be sort of like deep blue or very white almost I don't know like I say it's the way they see but anyway yeah like I said I just thought I'd film this part of the thought process now whether this will go on the actual build I might put it on the build I might just add it into a video for the week if you've got any ideas actually if I put it in a video that's not the prof the final build if you've got any ideas on it or thoughts on it let me know all ideas are welcome write it in the comments I'll try and come up with something that works. So like I say, the main issue with this is we need weight. We need enough weight that this isn't going to get pushed away. I mean, even little things like the fact that you've got 
this bulkier bit here. It's when you get a swell and the water's pushing. If you've got a, like a net, it'll go through it. But with this, it can push on it, and that's what can move your pots and stuff. And the other thing we've got to think of as well is when this pot goes down with this curve, we need to probably drill some holes because we don't want to trap any air. Because again, you'll have buoyancy if there's air trapped underneath that that top part. Because the basket we made prior, I think, was flat. It didn't have it didn't really have that kind of big curve to it. So again, we've got to think, make sure we get rid of any air pockets. Anyway, if you've got any ideas, let me know, and we'll. Uh, I'll keep thinking about it for a bit longer. This could take days, it could take weeks, it could take months, but I will come up with it in the end. Said that tree then come down. Whoa, there goes a branch. <laughs>